I'm sharing this sermon with you for the United Church of Canada Stewardship Division, who wrote this epiphany series for us to use. In his book, The Darkest Dark, astronaut Chris Hadfield writes about himself when he was a child. A child who tries everything he can to stay awake at night because he's afraid of what he imagines might be lurking in the dark. Later in the book, Chris goes to watch TV at his neighbor's house, the only TV in the neighborhood. <laughs> can you imagine that now? And his idea of what the dark is like changes because he sees real, live astronauts on the moon. He discovers that the dark is where dreams can come true, that both the shadows and the stars are beautiful, each in their own way. The dark allows him to see his own light and inspires him to decide that someday, someday he will become a real astronaut too. The dark causes Chris to see light in a new way, a way that would challenge his life by enabling him to see his own gifts. This light is what Isaiah was asking his people to see. Isaiah's people were afraid of the world around them. They were held down by empire, struggling to remember that they were God's people. They felt enveloped in a darkness that was overwhelming. Somehow they had to learn to see their inner light again. So Isaiah called them to arise and shine. Because in spite of all that was going on around them, God's light was indeed deep inside each of, each of them. It wasn't a call to be perfect but a call to be authentic in living out who God was calling them to be, to follow their inner light that mirrors God's light. This light is what causes us to shine so that we might also help to mirror the light of others, joining us and all of our gifts together. Isaiah, Isaiah's people needed a new way to see themselves. They needed hope for the future and who they would eventually become. It would be a journey, an uncovering of who they would be as God's people, those who would live lives of compassion and generosity toward themselves, each other, and the world around them. In many ways, we encounter a similar journey as we join the Magi in their search for the light. They knew that this light was important for them to follow, even into the empire of Rome and King Herod, an empire that played with people's fears. For people are easier to control if they are afraid. When the Magi find Jesus, they bring out their best gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They then realize that this light is changing the ways in which they see themselves in the world. And they know that they can't go back to Herod. For the light that they have seen would challenge his power. So they go home by a different road, a way that transforms them and the people who would hear their story. They could see the power the mystery and beauty of how this light called them to give the very best parts of themselves. Both of these stories call us to rise above our fears, to see beauty in what we offer, and how what we offer shapes us as disciples. Just like Isaiah's people, we're not called to be perfect but to arise and shine in all of our imperfect glory, for that's what God asks. God isn't concerned about what our shine looks like, but God does want us to be courageous enough to allow ourselves to be transformed in the rising, 
to go a different way because of the gifts that we share. Like the astronaut Chris Hadfield, we are able to see our realities, both the light and the dark, in ways that enable us to explore the very depths of our faith, just as Chris explored the very depths of the cosmos. When we rise and shine, we invite others to do the same. Whether we share our gifts unintentionally or better yet with purpose and desire, our light joins with the light in others, encouraging giving and gratitude as the very backbones of discipleship. Practicing gratitude and giving, rising and shining in response to the call of our God changes us. As disciples of Jesus, it's for us to know that this light and our best gifts are within us and only need to come out to be seen. This journey of discipleship is following the call to have the courage to share those gifts, to kneel like the Magi, to hear the call of Isaiah, not in spite of the world around us, but that the world might be transformed. As Chris Hadfield learned, we are never alone in both the dark and the light. We're able to hear the call of God and know that offering our gifts transforms us and the way we think about, about things like relationships with God and with others. May it be so. Amen. And amen. <laughs>